Welcome back to the channel. So as you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be giving you all seven questions to add to your list of questions because you know how we do with our list. We have our list of questions that we have when we are getting to know someone. And these are seven questions that I came up with being a family law attorney, dealing with relationships, talking to friends, going through relationships myself. And so these are seven questions that I came up with that I think should be included on everyone's list in 2023 as it relates to building healthy relationships. And so I do have my questions here. And I actually posted the questions in the community tab. So if you want to have those questions for a reference, feel free to go to the community tab and you can copy those questions and you can add those to your list. But I wanted to talk through them in this video. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. All right, so let's get started. Number one, how do you handle conflict? Listen to me. This is the question you need to ask. How do you handle conflict? The reason why you want to ask this question is because one, we know that conflict is a part of relationships, right? You cannot avoid conflict. It's going to happen. You have people who are different, come from different upbringings, different personalities. And so this is something that you need to know sooner rather than later. Are there a person that when they are faced with conflict, they like to run? Okay, you need to know that. Or are there a person when faced with conflict, they like to hide? Is that probably the same thing as run, right? <laughs> run, hide. Or do they get angry and go into like an angry rage or outburst and they just don't know how to control the anger? You need to know that sooner rather than later. How do you handle conflict? Okay, that's number one. Number two, how do you manage stress? This is another important question to ask because in 2023, the stresses of life are real, right? There's stress, there's work stress, there may be some financial stress, you may have a child, so that can be stress that comes from being a parent. And so you need to know how do you handle stress because there are healthy ways of handling stress and then there are unhealthy ways of handling stress. And so you need to know that. You need to know that if this is the person when they get really, really stressed, they flip out. That, that they flip out or when they get really, really stressed, they just start screaming and yelling or they just shut down and are withdrawn. You need to know. You need to know. Okay. Ask the question. Be intentional. 2023 going into 2024. I know we still have some, some time left in 2023, but we have to be intentional, y'all. This is our life. Okay. You have to be intentional. You have to ask the questions and don't be afraid to ask the questions and don't worry about running the person off. If they run off with by from you act asking these questions, then they're not the one for you, period. Now it's all about timing. It's all about delivery. Yes, those things matter, but this is your life. And so don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. Okay. That's number two. Number three, would you consider yourself to be self-aware? If so, how? Let me tell you, this is a question I recently added to my list because you know, okay. In all transparency, because you all know I'm transparent on this channel. It was such a refresher right? Is that the word I'm thinking of? A refresher to me to speak to a person in particular, a guy who was self-aware like that to me is so important now. Like that got added to my list. Cause I'm like, you need to be self-aware because if a person is self-aware first, before I say anything else, we all know that everybody has their own issue that they're dealing with. Nobody is perfect. We're all human. We all have flaws. We all have things that we need to work on. Granted, cool. That's fine. But it's one thing to be in denial about that. And then there's another thing to be self-aware. I can deal with a person who's self-aware, but a person who's in denial and they think they don't need any help and that maybe you're the problem and it's not them, red flag, run for your life. So ask, are you self-aware? And they probably say, of course I'm self-aware. Okay, well, how? How are you self-aware? You know, what are some things that you recently discovered about yourself? Well, you know, I noticed that I pretty much struggle with my time management. And so these are the things that I'm doing to try to improve that, to work on that. Or, you know, I noticed that I typically get angry. And when I get angry, sometimes I just shut down, but I know that I need to break out of that. And so these are some things that I'm doing to try to work through that. You can deal with a person like that because they are aware and they're taking action, actionable steps, action steps, right? To work on that. And so to me, that is so important, right? So that's number three. Number four, who are you accountable to? 
We all need to be accountable to somebody, to somebody. Who are you accountable to? This is important because a person who's not accountable to anybody, that's a dangerous person, potentially, right? That 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 person, and I, I don't mean dangerous in the word dangerous. You get what I'm saying? Like that person is not accountable to anyone. They're, they have the potential of doing just anything because who holds them accountable, right? Ideally, if you're watching this channel and you may be a Christian like myself, it should be the Lord. But also, who on earth holds you accountable? And again, it's another transparent moment. This was something that I noticed that I needed for myself, right? I needed to have accountability. Someone that was older than me because I have friends that help, help to hold me accountable. But I needed someone like a mature, older woman to help hold me accountable. Someone who's just, you know, been around a little bit longer in life. Someone who also was a true you know, walking out their faith, God fearing woman, because I have, you know, family members, but I needed someone specifically who just very, very strong in their faith and who could give me biblically sound, biblically advice. And so I knew that I needed that to help me grow, to mature as I continue to develop as a woman, but also to hold me accountable. So that's a very important question. Who are you accountable to? All right. Number five. Mm, this is a good one. How do you define masculinity versus femininity. Now, this is a question that I recently added because again, this is one of the common things that I would hear people talk about, guys in particular. They'll say, yeah, you know, I want to date with this person, but she was a little bit too masculine, you know, or, you know, she did this, but that was masculine. So it just made me curious, you know, and this particular person that I was talking to actually a few days ago, he was gracious to, to explain to me from a male's perspective what he meant by that. And it just helped me to better understand. And so, you need to understand, you need to ask that person, how do you define masculinity and how do you define femininity? Because people can have different definitions of that. And so you want to know that early on to see whether or not this person will be a good fit for you, right? Because for me, and I'll just be for me, I know that I have certain qualities and certain just characteristics about myself that can be perceived as masculine. I'm very assertive. I wouldn't say I'm aggressive. I'm not aggressive, but I'm very assertive. I'm very ambitious. I'm a go-getter. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to make it happen. That can be seen as masculine, right? But I know that for me, for the purpose that God has called for me to do, that I need to be doing certain things that may appear to be masculine. And I just know that, okay, if a person has a problem with that, then they're not the person for me, right? It makes me think about, you know, femininity doesn't mean that you have to walk around wearing high heels and, you know, you can't do any work. You just have to stay at home and cook and clean. To me, that's not femininity, but... That's why it's important to have that discussion with this particular person so that you can understand what their definition is and to see whether or not you will be a good fit with that person based on their definition, okay? So that is number five. Number six, what makes you feel disrespected? I think this is a very, very important question because as we're getting to know people, we may do things, we may say things that we don't mean to or we don't intend for it to be disrespectful, but it can come across as disrespectful to that person. And so we don't want to go around intentionally disrespecting people, right? And so everybody, again, we come from different backgrounds, experiences. It's just, we're all different. And so you can't just assume that a person know what your triggers are or know what you what makes you feel disrespected. So that's something that you want to be intentional to ask. What, what makes you feel disrespected, right? It's just to be intentional, be mindful, right? So that's number six. And finally, number seven, what makes you feel appreciated? We all wanna feel appreciated. We all wanna feel appreciated. And this is something, again, that I added to this list based on conversations that I've heard, particularly from a lot of guys, males, who say, you know, I just wanna feel appreciated. You know, I get up, I go out, I go work so hard for my family. I'm breaking my back, breaking my neck. I'm providing for my family. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I just want to feel appreciated. I don't want to feel disposable. I don't want to feel like I don't matter. I don't want to feel like I'm being taken for granted. I want to feel appreciated. So you want to ask the person, what makes you feel appreciated? Because for one person, what makes them feel appreciated may not transfer to another person, right? They may feel appreciated in a different way. For one person, they may feel appreciated by, and this makes me think about the five love languages by Gary Chapman. For one person, they may feel appreciated by you cooking them a nice meal. Another person may feel appreciated by you just telling them, hey, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you for waking up every day, despite sometimes you may not feel like it. And you put in such 
hard work and dedication to provide for this family. And we know it's not easy, but you do it anyway. You sacrifice for us and we just love you so much for that. We appreciate you so much for that. For another person, they may feel appreciated from that. For another person, they may say, oh, you just talking. If you really appreciate me, then show me, okay? You show me. Maybe an act of service, right? And so that's where, again, the five love languages comes into play. But you want to ask the person, what makes you feel appreciated? So these, again, are just seven questions that you want to make sure that you add to your list, your, your list, right? This segment of the channel is intended to help build healthy relationships. And so I thought that this would be helpful to make a video to talk about. And so if you found this video helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. Also, let's continue the conversation down below in the comment section and tell me your thoughts. Do you agree with the list? Disagree? Are there questions that you would add? Are there questions that you would take away? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And until next time, thank you so, so much for watching. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Same thing. I just like to say it twice. And I will see you all soon in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.